good to be in God's house this morning. Thankful that you chose to come this way. Uh, so Randy's going to come up and sing for us here in just a second. But I uh, just want to remind you that next Sunday we'll be having a baptizing. And I've got something special lined up for us next Sunday. So be sure you're out here. You come out and uh, take part in that. And we've got two we'll baptize. And then after the baptizing, uh, we'll have we're gonna have a little singing, a little preaching. We're gonna uh, baptize a couple people, and then we're gonna have dinner in the fellowship hall next week. And uh, I'm gonna remind you, the church will be providing uh, the meat next week. But we need you to bring out uh, some good side dishes, some green beans, and some cream corn, and some potato salad, and all that good stuff that goes along with it. We'll have fellowship dinner after the baptizing, and then there won't be any church next Sunday night. Tonight we will have service, so come back out tonight at 6 o'clock. We'll go ahead and let Mr. Randy come and sing for us. Amen. Bless your heart. Good morning. Good morning. Always good to be here. Good morning. Good morning. Good
Friday afternoon, I was sitting in my living room, and I uh, was reading some scripture, and my daughter walked in, and my wife was sitting there, and I'd been at graduation practice, and uh, my daughter looked at me, and she said, are you sad? Because uh, it was my last one as the principal over there at the high school, and I'd be moving into a different job at the end of the month, and uh, I looked at her and I, I you know, I, I just, I, I wasn't really that sad, although I did shed a few tears with the kids on Friday night, but my wife looked over at me and she said, it, it's time. And uh, my Bible <laughs> was open to Ecclesiastes chapter three for what I was reading. I just, I, I used a couple verses from that just a couple weeks ago on a Wednesday night. I just looked at him and I said, that's what I'm preaching on Sunday. And uh, so if you've got your Bible, you can go ahead and turn to the uh, book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number 3. I'll be reading 15 verses. I'm going to read 8 uh, to start out. And I'm going to read 9 through 15 uh, uh, at, the, at the end and uh, after I'm finished. But uh, on this thought, it's time. As we walk through this life, there's always changes coming, seasons change. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's times to move forward. Sometimes it's time to step back just a little bit. But God has a plan for our lives. God has a purpose for our lives. And we need to always remember that God is in control of our life. Yeah. At, at least if we will let him be, he is. Now, we have free will and we can make decisions. That, uh, that go against the will of God. But uh, as I read through this scripture, I'm just going to go a verse at a time. Here in the first eight verses, uh, as, as, uh, as, as they write this, they give 14 uh, different things here. And uh, they're word, opposite words, you know, that, that, that it talks about in each verse. And we'll start here in verse number one. It says, to everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under heaven. Verse number two. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck that which is planted. Right there in verse number two, I want you to notice that it says that there's a time to be, to be born. That's a time that God has appointed unto each one of us. That way when we come into this world. But it also says that there is a time to die. And Hebrews 9, 27 tells us, And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after that, the judgment. Not only is there a time appointed that we're going to leave this world, but the Bible tells us clearly here in Hebrews, when that time does come, we will stand before an almighty God, and he will judge us for our, for our rights, for our wrongs, for the things that we've done here on this earth. It goes on here, and uh, in verse number three, and it says that there is a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. As I looked at this and I thought about it, uh, I'll just tell you, it says a time to kill, and that sounds, you know, is there really a time to kill? Well, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 32, verse 39, it talks about that. That, you know, it says that God, that I kill and I make alive. That is, that is his responsibility. But it also, in that scripture, it does basically say that, you know, capital punishment is something that is part of God's word and part of God's law. But it goes on and it says that there is a time to heal. He can, he can bring, there can be hardship coming in our life. But there's also healing that comes through God. And I really like the second part of verse number three because it says a time to break down and a time to build up. And I got to thinking about this scripture last night as I was in my office trying to study and pray just a little bit. And I got to thinking about how so often in this life there's things that, that we put before us, things that are, that, that are part of our life that need to be torn down. Every once in a while, there's a wall in our life, and we need to tear that down so that we can grow in Christ. We need to remove those things. Maybe it's a fleshly desire. It's some kind of sin. Maybe it's something that, uh, hey, I'm going to tell you, sometimes it can be even a friend that we need to remove out of our life yeah. because they lead us astray and they get us out of God's will. But we need to be willing to break down those walls and those barriers that separate us from God. And then sometimes we have to be real careful. The Bible tells us that we have an adversary, the devil, and he's seeking to destroy. 
destroying us. And like, sometimes we need to build a wall back up too. Sometimes we need to protect ourselves. We need to protect our testimony. And we need to protect our witness as a Christian. And we have to put a wall between us and maybe someone we love. Maybe a wall between someone that we might consider a friend. Because they may be leading us astray. And it goes on here in verse 4 and it says, There is a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. That's the emotions of life that we deal with every day. And, and you know, sometimes, hey, there's tears. There, they can be happy tears. Just like, honestly, mine were on Friday. Be, I mean, just to be honest with you, I, I cried a few tears. They were happy tears. Because you know what? Those kids have accomplished something. And I was happy to see them. It was sad that I'm not going to be there in the same role next year. But I'll still be there. I still love those kids. And, but, you know, sometimes God wants us to laugh. He wants us to have a good time. He wants to enjoy each other in Christian fellowship. Sometimes we have to mourn the loss of someone, the loss of something. And sometimes it says that we need to dance. It goes on, it says in verse number 5, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. What it's talking about here when it's talking about casting away stones, it's saying that there's a time to get the field ready. There's, there's times where you have to go out there and, you know, you, pl you plow that ground up and there's rocks there. And you can't plant in those stones and in those rocks. So what did they do in the old time? They carried those to the outside of the field. Sometimes they used it to build a wall. Or especially, you can look all around Graham County and Cherokee County, these old home places, and you'll see these old rock walls where they carried those stones out of their fields and away from their yards where they stacked them up to protect maybe their garden and their crop uh, from wildlife and from, from, their, uh, from their cattle and things like that. So there's sometimes we got to cast away the stones, but then sometimes it says that we, that we need to gather the stones together. And it can be a defense mechanism put up. It says there's a time for embracing, a time to refrain from embracing. And then to go on to verse number six, and it says, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. I got to thinking about this last night, all these things that I've accumulated in my life over time. There's a whole lot of them, but you know what? I don't need anymore. Some of those things need to be cast away. They need to be given to someone else. We need to be cleared out. Hey, and in our spiritual life, it's the same way. Sometimes there's things that, that, that you know, they, they weigh us down. They hold us back from being the Christian that God wants us to be. And we need to cast those things out of our lives. And then sometimes it says there's a time to get. Hey, sometimes we need to get ready <laughs> for God to move in. We need to get ready to accept what he's given us and what he wants from us. And so what if you accumulate in this life? Ask yourself that this morning. What do you need to lose? What do you need to cast away? And then in verse number seven, it says, a time to win and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Hey, I got to think about that. You look in the book of Job, chapter number one, verse 20. It says, then Job arose and rent his mantle. Why did he do that? Because he just found out that everything he had was lost. His family, his, his, his daughters, his sons, they had been killed. He found this out. What did he do? He rent his clothes. He tore them. That's something that they did. They rent their garments. Uh, when, when bad things came to them. But then there's a time, it says, that comes with a time to sow. There's a time to heal, a time to mend, a time to put those things back together. It says a time to be silent. Sometimes, i tell you what, I like to mow my yard. I do. Uh, I, I, I'm, you know, it's just a time where I can listen. You know, I can hear that lawnmower, but a whole lot of time, what I hear is the Lord talking to me when I'm out there. It's just a time where I can concentrate on Him. Yesterday morning, I got up, told Kim uh, Friday night, I said, I'm going, I'm going to the creek in the morning, I'm going to go fly fish. Got up yesterday morning, I rode out to West Buffalo, and got my waders on, got in the creek, began to fish. And I tell you, I could feel the Lord the whole time I was there. I could hear Him speaking. I, I had conversation with him for three hours as I waded up that stream. And, you know, I, I caught, caught a few trout going to have them for supper tomorrow night. It was a good time in the Lord. 
It was a blessing. It was a time of silence. There wasn't no one around. There wasn't no one talking to me. Just me and God. We need that sometimes. We need to be ready to listen to God and what he has to say to us. But it also says that there's a time to speak. We need to be willing to share the Lord too. Hey, when, people, when he puts people before us that we need to be witness to, we need to be willing and ready to stand up and to speak about God and for God. And, 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 and that's what he wants from us. As I thought about this scripture, it goes on here in verse number 8. It says, a time to love and a time to hate. A time to love. It's a time to love God. A time to love our family. A time to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. A time to love our friends. You know what the scripture says? It even says that there's a time that we're to love our enemies. Yeah. Amen? Boy, that's hard for us, eh? But that's what God calls on us to do. And it says there's a time to hate. Does God want us to hate? I'll tell you what God wants you to hate. God wants you to hate the sin of this world. That's what he wants you to hate. He don't want you to hate the sinner. He don't want you to judge the sinner. He don't want you to talk about the sinner. God wants you to hate the sin that's in that sinner's life. That don't mean you hate that person. You need to love them because he did. He sent Jesus to die for them just like he died for us. It says there's a time of war. There's a time when it's right to fight for what you believe in. It says there's a time for peace. And there's only one way to get peace. And that's through a relationship with Jesus Christ. As I was sitting there last night in, my, in, the, in the study, I began to thinking about uh, what we need to get ready for. What, what, it, what time is it now? And I've got four or five things here that I want to share with you. The first one is this. It's time to start seeking. What do we need to seek? Well, number one is we need to seek the kingdom of God. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 35, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. I was sitting there this morning listening to a preacher down in Chattanooga, and I tell you what, he began to talk about the kingdom of God and why we should be looking to the kingdom of God and what we should expect from the kingdom of God. And I began to, as I listened to him, this is what he said. Now listen, this is, this is good stuff right here, church. He said... We need to quit asking God to bless the things that you are doing. Amen. Hey, quit asking God to bless the things you're doing and start doing things that God will bless you for. Amen. What's he saying? He's saying we need to get ourselves out of the way. We need to get in a place in our life. Hey, where we're looking to godly things, where we're living our life in a godly manner, in a way that God uh, uh, can use us. We need to be seeking the kingdom of God. Not all, and, and how do we do this? Well, I, I tell you, i got to think about the things we can do in our life. Obviously, and I'll talk about this a little more in a minute, but we can pray, we can read the Bible. But you know what? We need to give God, if we want to, if we want to seek the kingdom of God, if we want to live with God, we need to give God what is His. Boy, I'll tell you what, I'm going to step on some feet right here, but this is just the truth of the matter. Hey, give God what's his. Where does that start? It starts with your tithe. That's just the truth. Yeah. I mean, it, it is. Hey, what does the Bible say? It says to give 10%. You want your dollar to stretch? You want your dollar to, to really go somewhere? Give God his share first. Yes. Amen. He'll bless you for it. He will. Hey, and we need to bless God. We need to seek the kingdom of God through giving him our time. Hey, I got to, I got to think, I, fa I fall short. I fail when it comes to this. So if we're supposed to give 10% in tithe, do you not think we should give God 10% in time? So let's think about that. A day is 24 hours long, okay? And, you know, we sleep. Say you sleep a good eight hours every day. You, God don't expect you to well, a lot of times that's when I do my best praying. That's when I talk to him a lot. But you take those eight hours off, that's down to 16 hours in a day. So how much time should we be giving God all the time? You know what I'm saying? But to think about that. What's 10% of those 16 hours? Hey, we need to be giving that to God. And, and I, I, do I? Hey, I fall short all the time. I'm just telling you right now. I fail you. 
and I failed him. But what about you? What are you doing? How much time are you spending in prayer? How much time do you spend in study? How much time do you spend in service to an almighty God, to other people, in witnessing to him? I'll tell you right now, that's what he expects from us. If we're going to seek the kingdom of God, that's what, that's what he wants. Not only do we need to seek the kingdom of God, but we also need to seek godly wisdom in our lives. Uh, the Bible tells us in James chapter number 3, verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Hey, godly wisdom is what we need to seek. Hey, but what does that mean to have godly wisdom? I'll tell you what it means. It means instead of me making decisions for myself, it means that we make you make decisions based on what God shows you, on what God tells you, on your prayer life. You got God will answer prayers. He is timely. He will answer them when they need to be answered, to put you where you need to be, to show you how to act when you're there, to give you the words that you need to be a witness unto him. But we need to be looking for godly wisdom in this life. So all so too often we find ourselves making decisions in this world based on what will get me another, an extra dollar or two, what will give me a little more time in, uh, in, for my life to do the things that we want to do. That's just the facts of the matter. Why is that? Because we live in a society and in a time, hey, we, we, we like to entertain ourselves. Is that not the truth? I mean, that's just the fact of the matter. We're pleasure mad, as Daniel Stewart says. They, that's what he says all the time. That's what society is leading us to. We live in a place where, where, where you know, power and prestige, like they talked about this morning, is something that people desire to have. But where does that get them with God? Exactly. I, I mean, it gets them nowhere with God. Oh, we need to be in His will. We need to seek godly wisdom daily in our lives. And, and, and when we do that, then we will find, by seeking the kingdom of God and godly wisdom, we'll find that we have godly leadership in our lives. Amen. He'll be there walking with us, and we'll understand how to listen to him, how to interpret the things that he puts in our life. And we'll begin, how do we get godly leadership? What do we need to follow? The Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will start showing itself to you when you seek these other things. And you can have godly leadership in your life. Not only do we need to start seeking, but it's time that we start serving. How do we need to serve? We need to serve faithfully, the Bible tells us. We need to seek his will. We need to read his word. I'll tell you, tell you right now, if you, if you don't know the Bible, if you don't know uh, any scripture, then you know what? It's hard to be a witness unto the Lord, just to be honest with you. Now, you can tell people, well, I'm so glad God saved me. This is what he, he said. He's given me a good job. He's given me a good family. He saved my soul. I'm going to heaven one of these days. That's great. But what do you say to them when they say, well, here's the problem I have. Here's what I'm dealing with in my life. Now, what does the Bible say about that? Well, you better be on the toes. You better be ready. I, I'm, I'm serious. You better know what the scripture says. So you've got to read the scripture. You've got to devote your time to prayer and to relationship with him. And I'll tell you what, you need to praise him in all things. When, when things go bad, what do we need to do? We need to praise the Lord. Yeah. You know why? Because he's in control. Just like this morning in the Sunday school lesson. Hey, David in that lesson this morning, he was having a hard time. He was on the run. But he didn't, he knew where, he knew who was in control. Yeah. He knew what he needed to be doing. And that was praising God Almighty and asking God for help. And we need to be the same way, praising God in all things. And we need to serve faithfully, but we also need to serve unselfishly. We need to look to help others. We need to realize that we need to treat people with kindness and love like Jesus Christ did. We need to be an encourager to others. We need to offer help when people need help. We need to demonstrate caring, a caring and a loving heart in the way we live our our Christian life. And when we do that, hallelujah to the Lamb, it's time that as a, as a Christian person, as a member of Valley Town Baptist Church, as a saved person by the, by the blood of Jesus Christ, it's time that we start smiling just a little bit. Amen? Amen. There, I'll just tell you right now, there's nothing worse 
than a Christian that's lost their joy. Yeah. That's just the fact of the matter. God has done everything for you. He has done everything for me. He's given his son to us. And you know what? We need to be happy about it. And the world needs to see the joy in our heart. The joy of the Lord coming out in us. Nehemiah chapter 8 says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That's who we can be strong in. That's who can help us grow in Him. We need to have, we need to have a smile on our face. John 16, 24 says, Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. That's what we want to be. We need to be full of joy. And I'll tell you that for this day and time, oh my goodness. How do you know if somebody's full of joy or not? Well, you can tell it in their action. Yeah. I want to ask you something. When's the last time that you prayed God? I mean, just let it go. You didn't care how the person beside you looked at you. You didn't care how they, how they, what they thought of you. You just went crazy. You just praised the Lord. You raised your hand. You said hallelujah to the Lamb. You said amen. Hey, when the word of God is being preached, you worship God the way that he wants you to worship. Hey, well, you can see some joy coming out when people start praising the Lord and start doing what God what wants you to do. I tell you right now, there ain't nothing worse than to be in a place that's cold and dead in spirit and full of people that puts their hands right here and sits down on them. And that's the place that we're at in this world today. People are ashamed of Jesus and what he's done in their life. It's time we let loose. It's time we get out of the box, that we take our borders down, that the hedge comes down. When we come into the house of God, we need to start worshiping God and worshiping Jesus Christ in free pardon and spirit the way that he would have us to do it. Amen. 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 I mean, that's just the facts. Hey, you want people to fill up the pews of Allentown Baptist Church? You know what? They need to see a little joy in the, in the people here. Amen. They need to see that we're here to praise God for what he's done for us. Amen. Glory to God. I'll tell you what, he's been good to me. Better than I deserve. Hey, I, I, I can't even begin to start to tell you. But if you're sitting here this morning and your joy is lost, and you don't know which way to turn, I tell you, you turn back to him. Amen. He'll restore that joy. Hey, hey, there's trial, there's trouble, there's tribulations that come our way. Sometimes life can be hard. Sometimes we don't understand why things happen to us and to our family. But you know what the Bible says? Rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. Amen. We need to have some joy in our heart and know that God is in control. It's time that we start smiling. Hey, you know, and what's the next? It's time we start showing. <laughs> Whew. What do I mean? I mean, it's time we start letting people know what it means to be saved. It's time that people look at us and they say, my goodness, that's a godly person. Look at that. I can, I can see it all over them. I see where they lean. I see who they put their faith in. I see, I see the way they walk through life. I see how they treat other people. People need to see us as godly people. Amen. And they'll never want to be part of us. We got to be, we, we've got to show them what it means to be godly. We've got to show them what it means uh, to put God first in our lives. Our life should be a living testimony of the mercy of God. Our life should be a living testimony of the grace of God. Our life should be a living testimony of the holiness of God. I tell you what, it's time, church. It's time that we start making some changes in our life. It's time we make some changes in how we worship. It's how we make some changes in how we pray and how we read and how we devote our life and, and we put God first in everything we do. Linda, come to the piano. It's time that we get serious. Oh, I want to ask you this morning. Hey, are you pleasing God this morning? Or are, you li are you living your life the way that he would have you to live it? Or are you just, I'll tell you what, I find myself so often. I had some friends in last week. Y'all saw them here at church. 
We went over to Cherokee on Monday, and uh, we were as we went by the Solly, uh, the Solly Overlook there on Highway 28. June, the, the woman she said, "Man, that, that's beautiful. We can take a picture right there." I tell you, we're just riding along, just looking at the beauty. And so often, that's how we go through this life. We just kind of ride along. We just kind of look around, see what's going on over there, see what's going on over here. But we don't never go go take part in it. We don't never step out of our vehicle and see if we can help somebody or do what's in it. Hey, stop just riding around. Stop letting God do all the work for you. Go to work for him. Do what he would have you do. Quit paying attention <coughs> to everything else in the world and start paying attention to God. Hey, if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it's time for you to get saved. It's time for you to accept Jesus. It's time for you to let him move into your heart. <coughs> you have a relationship with him this morning. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he labored? I have seen the travail, I have seen the task which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy all the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatever, that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it nor anything taken from it. And God do it. And the men should fear before him. That which hath been is now. And that which is to be has already been. And God requires that which is past. Let me tell you something this morning. My God, he is in control. My God has given us everything that we have. He has put us here. He has given us a labor to do. He's given us a place to do it. Amen. It's time we get to work. It's time that we get serious about this thing. It's time we start sharing our witness and our testimony and our faith. It's time we start asking people to church. And when they reject us, we go back and we ask again. It's time we get started. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's time for you to accept Jesus and the free gift of salvation so that you can work for him, so that you can spend eternity in heaven with him. Jesus loves you this morning. God loves you this morning. It's time to go to work for him. Get where you need to go. As you stand to your feet and as she plays, I ask you this morning, are you serious about this thing? Hey, the Bible tells us there's a time for everything. To everything there is a season. What season in life are you in this morning? What does God need you to do for him this morning? I ask you, come to Jesus. Come turn it over to him. Lay down the trials and the tribulations that's come your way in this life. Let him be your comforter, your protector. That's what he wants this morning. He loves you. Come to Jesus as you play.